let us begin our choral eucharist in the name of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit amen let us glorify god let's all rise to our feet and sing to the glory of god the processional hymn 238 238 glorious things of thee are spoken Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are held, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God. As we remain standing, let us hear a Lord's summary of the Law and the Prophets. Our Lord's summary of the Law and the Prophets. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment. And the second one is, you should love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Page 6 for confession. Brothers and sisters, we have come together to hear God's most holy word and to receive the body and blood of the Lord. Let us therefore kneel and examine ourselves in silence, seeking God's grace, that we may draw near to Him with repentance and faith. You can sit or kneel. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and peace with your neighbor and intend to live a new life following the commandments of God and walking from now on in his holy ways, make your humble confession to the compassionate God that you may be reconciled anew to him through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's say the second corporate prayer of confession. O oh God of mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, that we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and heart mind. We are not loved with our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be so that we will delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the gracious word of God to all who truly turn to him through Jesus Christ. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run, but not weary. They shall walk and not faint. Come to me, all oh, you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest, says Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, 
that Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for us, for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Almighty God, our merciful Savior, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all, who forgive their brothers and sisters, and with a heartfelt repentance and true faith, turn to him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver it from all your sins, confirm and strengthen in all goodness, and bring you to life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Today is third Sunday after Pentecost, and the theme for this Sunday is Restoration of the Glory. Shall we all look to the Lord in prayer while praying together the collect? Sovereign God, we thank you for our Son who commissioned us to be the disciples to go out and proclaim the gospel, to make disciples of all nations and to demonstrate the reality of your love through word and deed. We humbly ask you to strengthen, equip and inspire each one of us for your service that we may joyfully serve you, sensitively proclaim you and faithfully express your love for all and walk toward restoration of your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we'll have the scripture readings, the Old Testament, then the Epistle. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Amos, chapter 9, verses 11 to 12. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Amos, chapter 9, verses 11 to 12. In that day, I will raise up the booth of David that is fallen and repair its breaches, and raise up its ruins and reveal it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom, and all the nations who are called by my name, declares the Lord who does this. So the epistle reading is taken from the book of Revelations, chapter 21, verses 1 to 3. The book of Revelations, chapter 21, verses 1 to 3. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be with his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. Thank you. Here ends the episode. Again. The preacher this morning is Dr. Spurgeon, the Chief Executive Officer of 
the Bangalore Baptist Hospital. Today, the Senior Citizens Committee of our cathedral is organizing a free medical camp. And in this connection, they have approached Bangalore Baptist Hospital to extend their support and Dr. Spurgeon and specialists over there have considered our request favorably and they are here to minister to us and also to attend to us and extend to us all the needed medical care. As the medical camp is going on, we have here Dr. Spurgeon to minister to us. Dr. Spurgeon is son of our pastor who has served in Andhra Pradesh and he is a proud graduate of CMC Velour and he has specialized in endocrinolo endocrinology and he's, he has also done his MBA uh, from uh, Bits Pilani and he has been serving the Bangalore Baptist Hospital from 2004. We are so glad that he and his dear wife Dr. Rachel who is a pediatrician and also a neurologist who is serving over there have been a great source of blessing to many people. Today, I asked him to just preach for the nine o'clock service and asked whether he would like to refer to someone else from Bangalore Baptist Hospital to minister to us in the seven as well as 11 o'clock service. But Dr. Spurgeon was very clear. He said he would like to minister in all the three services that reveals his passion to preach the word of God and his passion to glorify God through inspiring people, motivating people to strive to honor God, glorifying him. It's such a joy that we have a wonderful leader under whom the Bangalore Baptist Hospital is growing in leaps and bounds to minister to us. On behalf of each one of you and the members of the pastor committee, I extend a warm welcome to Dr. Spurgeon. He would be ministering to us after the gradual and followed by the gospel lesson. Our gradual is hymn number 10, Father of Heaven, whose love profound.
reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 17 to 19. Matthew, chapter 16, beginning to read at verse 17. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Here ends the gospel reading. Praise be to the O Christ. Please be seated. I bring greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's my privilege and my pleasure to be able to partake with you all this morning. The gospel reading that we read from the book of Matthew chapter 16 we see after the confession of Peter, Jesus as a Christ. Jesus asked this question when he was in the Gentile territory, 120 kilometers away from Jerusalem city. And he asked the question, what do people think about me? And they gave different opinions. Some said, you are John the Baptist, and some others said, you are one of the greatest prophets like Elijah. Some said Jeremiah. But Jesus asked this question to the disciples, but what do you think about me? And Peter responded saying, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, Simon, son of Jonah, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but this was revealed to you by my father in heaven. And the very next verse he says, you are Peter on this rock, I will build my church. The church is something which is not born out of human idea. It was not come out of the opinion of the people, but it was something which the Lord has even before the foundations of this world. And he says, the Lord Jesus here, I will build my church. If you see in the Bible, for the first time the word church is used in this context where Jesus himself you know, said, it is my idea, it is my plan, and I am going to build the church, a church which is glorious, where my presence and my glory will dwell in that place. Now we see after the death and the resurrection of Christ Jesus, just before his ascension, he has given a commandment to the disciples. You know, We see this in the book of Acts chapter one, verse eight. The Bible says like this, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of this earth. Now the idea that God had in his mind that the church is the redeemed people of God, the people who are separated from sin, the people who are consecrated to God and his purposes, they are not confined to one geographical area, but the idea that God has in his mind is not only in Jerusalem, but the church has to go to Judea, Samaria, and even to the ends of this earth. Now we see, after 10 days of waiting there in the upper room, the disciples were united in prayer, the disciples were waiting upon the promise which the Lord Jesus has given to these people. And on the day of Pentecost, that is after 10 days of waiting, the Spirit of God came upon those 120 people who are waiting in the upper room. And that was how the church was born. The church with 120 people empowered by the Holy Spirit and the, that was how the church was born. And if you read the book of Acts, chapter one onwards, till chapter seven, we see the mighty work of the church. 
the day when Peter stood up and he proclaimed how Christ was crucified and how God has made him the savior for this whole world and how he has become the one who can forgive the sins of the humanity. The Bible mentions 3,000 people were added to the church. And the same chapter in chapter 2 we see the church which was 3,000 having 3,000 members increased to 5,000 members. It was a glorious time and the Lord has been confirming and working through the apostles. The spirit of God is manifesting, you know, through signs and wonders and miracles. People were attracted to the power of God. But the, but the thing that we see in the book of Acts, chapter 1 to chapter 7, the church was still confined to the city of Jerusalem. I probably feel the apostles have forgotten the mission, the commission that the Lord has given to them. What was that? You need to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of this earth. Now in chapter 7 we see Stephen was put to death, the first matter for Christ Jesus. And immediately after that one, in chapter 8 we see, the Bible mentions, you know, there was great persecution upon the church. The word great persecution. And then the second verse and the third verse it says, there was also great lamentation by the people because of the death of Stephen. All the disciples, there was a great lamentation. But some of the people, because of the persecution, the elders in the church of Jerusalem, they scattered out of Jerusalem. It was Philip who went to the city of Samaria and took this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible mentions in chapter 8, there was great joy in the city of Samaria because the gospel has been proclaimed in the city of Samaria. And the people have come to the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus. There was great joy in the city of Samaria. Now the gospel has moved from Jerusalem to Samaria, but the apostles were hesitant to step out of Jerusalem. Now in chapter 9 we see, apostle, you know, Paul before his conversion, Saul, he took the permission from the high priest and then he was on the way to Damascus. He wanted to put people into prison. He wanted to kill the people who were the followers and the disciples of Christ Jesus. And there on the road to Damascus, God has encountered him. He had an encounter with Christ Jesus and there was transformation in his life. Even today, when people come to Jesus Christ, we see the transforming power of Jesus working, you know, transforming the lives of the people even today because God is the same even today. He will never ever change. He is in the business of transforming the lives of people and he is in the business of building the churches so that his glory will move from Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of this earth. In chapter 8, the gospel went from Jerusalem to Samaria. Chapter 9, we see the transformation of Saul. Chapter 10, we see a wonderful thing in the book of Acts. Peter has and the, all the other apostles they had in this mind that this gospel is only for the Jewish people. They never thought about the commission that this gospel is also for the Gentiles. You know, Peter has to be, you know, he has to change his mindset. The Lord has given him a vision. Cornelius was praying eagerly and intently and the Lord has given a vision to Cornelius and the Lord has given a vision to you know, Peter. Now Peter goes to the house of Cornelius and there he preaches the gospel and we see the transforming power of Jesus Christ again at work. All those people, they gave their life to Jesus Christ and the Gentiles, they were turning towards the saving power of Christ Jesus. Now the mindset of Peter changed. Chapter 11. Now Peter goes back to the council at Jerusalem and he explains how the Lord was working even with the Gentiles and the Jerusalem, the church in the Jerusalem and the elders in the city, in the, in the city of Jerusalem. They, they were aware now that the gospel message is for everyone. The mindset of the church was changed. And in chapter 13, we see how God was orchestrating the events right from Jerusalem, bringing the persecution and pushing these people to go to, into the city of Samaria. And from there, transforming the mindset of Peter, saying that this gospel message is for everyone, even to the Gentiles. Now, transforming and changing the mindset of the church at Jerusalem. Now, 
the platform is set up for apostle paul to take this gospel to the ends of this earth he begins his first missionary tour in chapter 13 and as i read this it thrills me i wonder how the lord has been orchestrating because as the bible says i will build my church now god is in the business of building his church now what is that distinct future that differentiates the church from any other community any other congregation it is the glory of god that dwells in the house of god it is the manifest presence of god that is there amidst of the people this is what which will differentiate and keeps the community of the believers you know set apart from the you know communities of this world now the prototype of this church we see in the old testament now when the people of israel came out of the land of egypt the lord has commanded moses we see in the book of exodus chapter 25 verse 8 the lord said to moses you know let them build a tabernacle for me so that i will dwell amidst of their presence that was the idea of god to stay in the midst of his people and we see in the book of exodus chapter 31 verse 1 to 3 you know god has fill the people with his spirit so that they'll be able to you know work the tabernacle and build the tabernacle of god so it was the idea of god to build the tabernacle it was the people who are filled by the spirit of god who are able to build the tabernacle and the outcome of this one we see in the book of exodus chapter 40 verse 34 the bible says the glory of the lord has come and dwelt in the tabernacle of god what a glorious thing the glory the manifest presence of God dwelling in the house of God. And we see a similar thing when Solomon has built the temple. You know, when the priests were praising and giving thanks to him. The smoke covered because the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests were not able to minister when they were in the presence of God. That is the idea of the church which the Lord Jesus is now building. God's idea, God's spirit, and God's glory. Now there was a time in the nation of Israel and there was a young lady who was pregnant, the daughter-in-law of the high priest Eli. The ark of the covenant of God where the glory of God is dwelling. The enemies came and attacked the nation of Israel and they took the Ark of the Covenant where the glory of God was there. And you know, she was fully pregnant nine plus months and she was having labor pains and then she delivered a baby and she named that male baby, do you know what was the name that was given? Ikabod. Kabod means glory. Ikabod means the glory has departed. So sad. And this lady, though she gave birth to a son, a male son, she was still not happy when she heard the news that the Ark of the Covenant of God was taken away from the nation of Israel. She cries out, Igapoth, Ikaboth, the glory of the Lord has departed and she dies. Even in the book of Ezekiel, when the nation of Israel was stiff-necked and disobedient to the commandments of God, you know, the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 10, verse 18, the glory of the Lord departed from the temple. The glory of the Lord departed from the temple. Is it possible, you know, to have a physical structure? Is it possible, you know, to have all kind of a gathering without the glory of God? Yes, it is perfectly possible. This is what has happened to the nation of Israel. The physical structure was there. The routine things were happening, but they lost the glory of God. And I want to share with you briefly how the glory of God has returned back so that, you know, they were able to enjoy the presence of God. Now the people of Israel, they were deported to a foreign land, the land of Babylon. You know, all the young people, they were displaced from their native land, from the city of Jerusalem, and now they were staying in a foreign place. And we see in the book of Daniel, the story of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, Daniel rose to power, and he was occupying a prominent position in the Babylonian kingdom. 
and he was serving many kings nebuchadnezzar and his son balshazar and later on cyrus and darius and all these people but look at the heart cry of daniel daniel was a young man when he was deported to babylon but look at his heart cry when he was very old the bible says in the book of daniel chapter 9 was 1 and 2 like this in the first year of darius the son of ahasuerus of the lineage of medes who was made king over the realm of the kaldeans in the first year of his reign i daniel understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the lord through jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of jerusalem then i set my face towards the lord god to make request by prayer and supplication with fasting sackcloth and ashes and i prayed to the lord my god look at the heart of daniel probably i presume he was old maybe 80 plus years old because he came as a teenager and now he was there in the babylon for 70 long years now look at the heart cry and the passion and the burden that daniel had though he was living in the royal palace wearing the royal robes but the heart and his mind and his passion was fixed for the nation of jerusalem was fixed for the temple of jerusalem and the glory of god he is praying lord i confess and lord i repent of the sins of my nation i repent of my sins please visit once again and god is a god who listens to our prayer and who looks at the passion of our heart and who answers our prayers we see in the book of ezra chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 the lord moves the heart of cyrus king of persia and he makes a proclamation the lord has appointed me now it is a time i want to rebuild the temple of jerusalem and he made a public proclamation to the you know to the to the babylonian kingdom saying that you can go back to your native town you can go back to our temple of jerusalem and you can rebuild you know rebuilding the walls and the temple of jerusalem we see in the book of ezra chapter 3 was 8 and 9 you know chapter 1 chapter 3 was 1 2 3 joshua and zerubbabel these are young people and they were also passionate for the glory of god and these people they stepped out of the place where they were living maybe they were comfortable and happy they settled but they were caught up with the passion when the king made the proclamation they goes back to their you know nation of jerusalem and together Joshua and Zerubbabel they started rebuilding the altars of Jerusalem and they started offering sacrifice it requires an old man to pray passionately to regain and to restore the glory of God it requires two young people like Joshua and Zerubbabel who are passionate for the glory of God and for the kingdom of God to go back from their comfortable positions and to rebuild and make a foundation and to rebuild the altar of God it also requires people like nehemiah when he heard the news of the broken walls and the gates that were burnt he left his comfortable position and he go back goes back to the nation of jerusalem and he rebuilds the walls of jerusalem there was a promise when the work came to a standstill prophet haggai said in the book of haggai chapter 2 was 8 the glory of this later temple the glory of this temple will be greater than the former and that was true the glory of the temple that was built will be greater than the former temple we see after few hundred years jesus himself the bible mentions john's gospel chapter 1 was 14 the word became flesh and he dwelt amidst of us and we beheld the glory of the one and the only one full of grace and full of truth jesus at the appointed time he came with all his glory in flesh and blood and he walked into the temple the same temple which was rebuilt by you know these people the glory of the later temple will be greater than the former glory and what was the mission of jesus christ he says in luke's gospel chapter 4 verse 18 he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach gospel to the poor he has sent me to the heal the broken hearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed this was the mission of jesus christ proclamation of the gospel to the poor 
Apostle Paul says in the book of Romans chapter 1, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ Jesus for it is a power of God for salvation to everyone who believes in him. There is power in the proclamation of gospel. There is also power when we believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ because it will bring about the transformation in our lives. And then the Bible also says to heal the broken hearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and to recovery of sight to the blind. This was the mission of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the same book we see the promise if it was written even in the book of Acts. I am going to rebuild. I am going to, you know, you know, uh, restore the glory, you know, back. I am going to rebuild the fallen tent of David. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord wants to build his church. If there is one thing that satisfies us, if there is one thing that we need to long after and be passionate, if there is one thing that gives us satisfaction and the meaning for our life, it is the glory of God. If there is no glory, what is worth living this life? It is not worth we need to be passionate for the glory of God. Let me tell you this story and close this one. I think you must have heard this story of Father Damien when he was a young man. His bishop has given him the commission to go to the island of Molokai. The island was full of lepers because they were outcast. Because at that time, leprosy was contagious. They were left in, the, in that island to die. And this priest was told, you should not touch these people because leprosy is infectious. You should stay far away. But this young man listens to the call of God and he goes to the island of Molokai full of lepers. And then he starts ministering to the people who are isolated and who are left alone to die on that island. When he looks at the people, they were full of wounds and ulcers pus was dripping from their owns and no one was willing to touch and he was moved with the love and the compassion of Christ Jesus not only has he touched and he started you know you know cleaning the wounds and the ulcers of these people who are left alone and he started putting the bandages showing the love and the compassion of Christ Jesus people were touched because of the love and the compassion their broken hearts were healed because of that compassionate touch after some years, one fine day, he was not able to feel the sensation in his body. And the next morning, he called all the inmates of the island of Malachi and he said, my fellow lepers. He was contracted with leprosy and he died with leprosy there on that island, showing the love and the compassion of Christ Jesus. When he died, the king of Belgium heard the news how much, you know, he was able to minister, how much love and compassion that he showed to these people who were isolated, untouchables. And the king of Belgium wanted his body to be brought to Belgium and to be buried there. But the inmates of the island of Malake, they said, Sir, when we were left alone in this island, no hand came forward to touch us. No human being came to us to speak the words of love and compassion. But this man, he not only came to us when we were left alone, but his own hands has touched us. His own hands has bandaged our wounds. He showed the love and the compassion and he demonstrated the love of, com love of Christ to us. You just give us his hands. We want to bury his hands which served us in this island. The rest of the body you can take back to your country. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach gospel to the poor and to heal the broken hearted and to set the captives free and to grant vision for the blind. The Lord Jesus said, he wants to step in and what a wonderful thing is to have the glory of God and the presence of God in our lives. Apostle Paul says in the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. I pray that you will experience 
that glorious presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, anyone who has come to the Lord Jesus, believing him, never went back without the transforming touch of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only he will grant you that glorious presence in your life, but he will also grant you that glory even in the days to come. As we read in the book of Revelation chapter 21, the dwelling place of God is with men and he will dwell with them. There is no tear, no fear, because the presence of God is with them. But even now, we can enjoy that glory. And God requires people like Daniel who are passionate for the glory of God. He was praying and intercessing. God requires young people like Joshua and Zerubbabel who are willing to be in the front line to rebuild the broken altar of God. God requires people like Nehemiah willing to step out of their comfortable zones and the comfortable positions to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem so that together, not only in our lives, even in our institutions, even in our churches, wherever we go, we can experience that glory of God. May the Lord help us and may we have this passion for the glory of God. May the Lord help us. I believe in one God Please be seated.
praise god god has raised a servant one most person in our midst to minister to our generation dr spurgeon amidst us reminds us of that world famous revival preacher a firebrand dr spurgeon who brought in so much of transformation and change and here we have one more dr spurgeon having that same passion and zeal for the lord on behalf of each one of you and the members of the pastorate committee i want to thank dr spurgeon for ministering to us his insights from book of acts and from the heroes of faith in the bible how they strive to glorify god in the given situation facing persecution and all sorts of challenges is amazing and he has motivated us and encouraged and uplifted us to also strive to glorify god in every given situation whatever may be the persecution whatever may be the challenges whatever may be the hurdles that is put across we need to glorify god that is our calling and we are grateful to god that god has raised his servant and he is the chief executive officer of bangalore baptist hospital which is serving our community and especially uh, they are a great help to the church of south india karnataka central diocese uh, in the past they have helped to revive the csa hospital at chikpalapur and also greatly helped csa hospital here in bangalore even during our covid days uh, they were willing to extend all the needed help to extend uh, our medical mission to the poor and needy we are so grateful to their gesture and we are so grateful that under the leadership of dr spurgeon they have wonderful outreach ministry and they are here today not just to just conduct a medical camp and just uh, uh, just do it call it a day but it is to establish a relationship with you the when you go for a medical checkup you are going to establish a relationship with them and they have wonderful ministry especially of following doing following up very especially to the seniors and uh, our own church members many of them have witnessed to me some of them are bedridden for years now and they, we ourselves don't go and visit them but here is a hospital just a phone call they go there and minister to them and extend all the needed support and help in their most um, uh, precarious situation and uh, the bangalore baptist hospital has been so kind to us and has extended the love of christ in so many ways we are really grateful to them and very especially uh, with a visionary like dr spurgeon i'm sure that we'll be able to extend medical mission throughout bangalore in most powerful way may god help us in exploring various partnership and very especially uh, help us uh, to meet the medical challenges not only in our community in the society at large and at this time i invite the uh, secretary of our church and also the convener of the senior citizens uh, subcommittee to kindly come forward and show our gratitude to dr spurgeon and the bangalore baptist hospital for their kindness and their loving gesture i request dr spurgeon to please kindly come forward and receive a token of love shall we give them a round of applause as we have been announcing today we have a free medical camp organized by our cathedral senior citizen subcommittee in association with bangalore baptist hospital this camp is going to be till 1 o'clock but you can always uh, go and share whatever your concerns are so that you'll be able to do the follow up in the coming week and or in days to come they are offering free uh, services uh, in various departments very specially 
internal medicine, cardiology, orthopedics, ENT, audiometry, ophthalmology, psychiatry, BP, BMI, and sugar test, and also uh, nutri nutrition. And uh, this is open for all those who are 50 years and above. And uh, if you are having medical challenges, uh, please carry your recent medical reports. It would help them to uh, look into your needs. And as I said, uh, this is just going to help you to establish a contact link relationship with them so that in days to come, you can always uh, call them and they are always there uh, to extend the love of Christ to you through medical mission. So kindly make best use of this. It's not just for St. Mark's uh, members. It's open for all. So please, uh, you have time. So please call your friends and relatives, uh, your neighbors also to kindly come and make best use of this medical camp and tell them that this is not just uh, a checkup. It's going to be a relationship that you're going to build uh, with Bangalore Baptist Hospital so that at all times they're there to care for you. The announcements are on the pew slip. Please kindly go through them. Uh, please uplift Dr. Jesudas and his family in your prayers as they grieve for Dr. Doris Jesudas. Uh, please remember this family as they are going through grief. I publish the bans of marriage between Mahim Kamath, son of Mr. Mohandas Kamath, and Mrs. Rachel Malini of St. Mark's Cathedral, and Shebna J. Prakash, daughter of Mr. Job Surinder Prakash, and Mrs. Vandana J. Prakash of St. Anne's Church in Door. If any one of you know just cause why these two persons should not be joined together in marriage, you are to declare it in writing to the Presbyterian charge of this congregation. This is the second time of asking. May God bless these servants and enable them to unite through holy matrimony, establish a wonderful family that would bring in great blessing to him, to everyone, and use their family for his purposes. Let us enter into time of intercession. Uh, before that, I have one more important announcement. It is with great pleasure I would like to inform each one of you that our senior member of our cathedral and also member of the pastorate committee and who has served our Bishop Cotton School, our own church school as principal, Dr. Abraham Ebenezer has released a book titled, A Journey in Leadership, celebrating 75 years of God's faithfulness. His family had organized a wonderful celebration yesterday to launch this book. This is a riveting biography in the, is the, this is the essence of the leadership which Dr. Ebenezer displayed throughout his lifetime. And this is a wonderful piece of literature which would be very inspiring for each one of us to understand the present circumstances and how we need to glorify God. And this book is available for sale and uh, they have been kept at the resource center and also uh, here in in the porch, we request you to uh, kindly patronize and make use of this book uh, to motivate and encourage people to expect great things from God and attempt great things for God in our diocese and in our community and society at large. Let us enter into time of intercession. For the peace that is from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
for the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of God's holy churches, and for the union of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For our bishops and all other ministers, especially Dharma Raja, our moderator, and Prasanna Kumar, our bishop, and Prem Chand, the moderator of the Church of North India, and Mar Theodosius, the Metropolitan of the Mahathoma Church, Dr. Spurgeon, our preacher, Vincent and our own clergy, that with a good heart and a pure conscience they may accomplish their ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> For the President of our Republic, Ramnath Kovind, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the Governor of our state, Tavarchan Gehlot, the Chief Minister, Basavaraj Bommai, and all those who serve in the government, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful and the dying, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor, the hungry, the orphans and the widows, and them that suffer persecution, let us pray to the Lord. For ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, let us pray to the Lord. that with all his servants who have served me here and are now at rest, we may enter into the fullness of his unending joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us remember those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries today and during this week. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for another year of grace you bestowed to these our members, as with thankfulness they raise their hearts in gratitude. Lord, may your blessings be their portion. Continue to guide them by your presence, and may your faithfulness inspire them to be faithful to the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us also remember the Bangla Baptist Hospital and our hospital ministries. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask thy blessing on Bangla Baptist Hospital, all the members of the staff who serve the people. May the compassion of the Lord, the love of the Lord, bring glory to God's name. Bless our other hospitals who cooperate and collaborate and may that testimony be a testimony of your goodness and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Let us turn to page 20 in the brown booklet, page 20. Shall we all stand for the breaking of the bread?
how very good and pleasant it is when people of God live together in unity. We who are many of one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace through Namaskar and say to one another, the peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Recollecting to our minds the manifold blessings that we have been bestowed, let us with gratitude offer our thank offering to God for His glory. Shall we all sing hymn number 199? 199. 199. Hallelujah! Sing to Jesus.
let us present these offerings along with them ourselves for the service of the Divine Majesty. Let us pray. Holy God, who through your Son has consecrated for us a new and living way to your throne of grace, we come to you through him, unworthy as we are, and we humbly ask you to accept and use us and these our gifts for your glory. All that is in heaven and earth is yours, and of your own we give to you. Amen. Please be seated. Rejoicing in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ amidst us, shall we all in unison say the prayer of presence found on page 22. Be present, be present, O Jesus, you good high priest, as you were in the midst of your disciples, and make yourself known to us in the breaking of the bread, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our Lord God. It is indeed right, our duty and highest joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, holy, almighty, and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, O Lord, through whom you create the heavens and the earth and all that is in them, and made humankind in your own image, when it had fallen into sin, you redeemed it to be the first fruits of a new creation. Truly holy, truly blessed are you, O God, our Saviour, who of your tender love towards humankind gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made that by his one oblation of himself, once offered our full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Who in the same night when he was betrayed took bread and after having given thanks broke it and gave to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many 
for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord, our God, remembering the precious death and passion and glorious resurrection and ascension of your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, do this in remembrance of him as he commanded in his coming again, giving thanks to you for the perfect redemption which you have brought about for us in him. And we most humbly ask you, merciful God, to sanctify with your Holy Spirit us and these your own gifts of bread and wine, that the bread which we break may be the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup which we bless the communion of the blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may all attain to the unity of the faith and may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, even Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, O God Almighty, world without end. As our Savior Christ has taught us, so we pray. Shall we all, in unison, say the prayer of humble access? We do not presume to come to this When we break the bread, do we not share in the body of Christ? When we lift the cup, do we not share in the lifeblood of Christ?
as the music is played let us participate in the lord's table let us receive the body and blood of our lord jesus christ Having now by faith received the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ, let us give thanks. Let us follow the litany of thanksgiving found on page 29, the first litany. O gracious God, you have fed us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. You have assured us in these holy mysteries of your favor and goodness toward us, and that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. For these great benefits, we thank you and in union with your Son. We offer you ourselves as a living sacrifice. And now, Lord, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. Shall we all stand for the benediction? Let us receive God's blessings in faith. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. The recessional hymn is hymn number 196, 196, Jesus shall reign wherever the sun.
graciously accept your God, this our Eucharist, the sacrifice of our praise and thanksgiving, and fill our hearts with the joy of your salvation, that each one of us will strive for your glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us depart in peace.